Hey everybody uh, and welcome back to another roundup video brought to you by the Seedstream Formula One app. This time of course rounding up the Austrian Grand Prix which has just finished so forgive me if I miss any post-race penalties that haven't yet been applied. Uh, we're also only shortly before potentially England's last game in the European Championship and so I've got the shirt on so by the time you see this I will either be wearing it to celebrate England sailing through to the quarterfinals or wearing it for what will probably be the very last time this summer, commiserating them crashing out of the tournament. Um, I'm sure we will know by the time this video goes live. Um, but let's talk about the Austrian Grand Prix and the only topic that is going to be ahead of all others after this particular race is of course that battle between Lando Norris and Max Verstappen and particularly how it ended. Controversy, but my goodness did that race come alive. I actually thought it was an interesting Grand Prix for most of it anyway, although there were large spells which were under a sort of DRS train at various points in the field, I still thought there was lots of action and enough to keep me entertained. But it was all about the last few laps for me, and that is exactly where we're going to start. The great thing, let's take the positives first of all, the great thing about this race and the great thing about the very fact that we're talking about these collisions and this battle between those two drivers is the fact that they are literally on the same piece of track because they're as quick as each other. And in fact, at the end of that Grand Prix, it was Lando Norris who was the quicker of those two cars. He was desperately trying to find a way past Max Verstappen. And Max Verstappen, who, yes, had had a difficult pit stop, which had cost them a lot of time and brought Lando definitely back into play. But even on pure pace alone, it was the McLaren in the hands of Norris who was the class of the field at the end of the Grand Prix, as we've seen in recent races. This is a trend that's starting to form, isn't it? The McLaren kind of on its tyres, certainly in the hands of Lando. Their strategies have been good. Uh, Lando's driving has been almost impeccable, although he'll be self-critical, I have no doubt, as he always is. But it's actually Lando Norris and Max Verstappen, who I think, in race pace on the Sundays, who are the class of the field. And that was the case again today. Let's talk about the incidents because <laughs> on one hand, I love to see this kind of close racing. I love seeing these two drivers, yet yeah, friends outside of the car, or at least they were until today, um, battling so hard for the same piece of tarmac. We haven't really been able to say that for a long, long time, have we? Such has been the dominance of Max Verstappen and Red Bull we haven't had anybody that's been able to challenge them on a consistent basis. And as a result of that, we are seeing Max Verstappen and Red Bull being put under pressure. We've seen it in recent weeks. And actually, one of the talking points in recent weeks has been about how Max Verstappen and Red Bull have really excelled when it's been put under pressure. They have continually delivered excellence in almost every area. We rarely see mistakes from either the team or the driver. Yet today that was very different, wasn't it? Because we saw a disastrous pit stop, which brought Lando Norris really back into play towards the end of that race. We saw questionable strategy decisions, although that might be a little bit harsh. And we definitely saw some questionable driving from Max Verstappen when he was put under that pressure in the closing laps of the Grand Prix. It was almost like seeing a Max Verstappen from years gone by when he first came into the sport, when he came out of so much criticism for the aggressive nature of his driving, the questionable moves, the sort of moving under braking. They even introduced a rule about not moving under braking because of Max Verstappen. And it was Max Verstappen that seemed to breach that rule again today. Although the stewards didn't seem to agree necessarily, which I find very strange. If I look at those incidents, the ones before the actual contact, the moments in the build-up in the laps preceding the one that brought their race to an end, I can think of definitely one, possibly two moves where Max Verstappen, in my mind and seemingly in the mind of many others, was very clearly at fault. I think there were three incidents that were in question. One of them, I think, I actually think was fair enough. Uh, one of those, I think Lando went up the inside and, and actually locked a tyre, um, was slightly out of control, and that's the one that forced Max Verstappen off. Uh, so I think that one could be up for question, could be up for debate. I wouldn't go all in and say that was Max overtaking off the racetrack. I think he was forced off the racetrack because Lando got it slightly wrong and snatched a tyre. You could then argue because he locked a tyre, he was slightly out of control. And that was what led to Max leaving the racetrack. But anyway, that's debatable in itself. The others, the moving in the braking zone, 
but <laughs> moving in the braking zone is is vastly dangerous and that's why it's been banned the drivers at that point are on the absolute adhesion limit of their cars they're tearing into that corner typically it was corner three where it happened they are braking at the very last moment they're not just braking for a roundabout as we would in our road cars with a little bit to spare they are on the ragged edge on the limits they're trying to outbreak their opponent they're trying to get every last hundredths of a second out of that car they are literally at as much as the car can give as much as the tires are able to hang on as much braking force as they're able to generate by stomping on that pedal literally as hard as they can that's what they're doing almost every time into those corners and so when you're in that phase and you're hanging on for dear life hoping you've got it just about right if a driver then decides to change their direction if they move in that phase there is very little you can do about it to avoid an accident and actually on the first occasion where it happened Lando did very well to avoid that accident and steered around it you know they kind of got away with it he came on the radio to complain understandably but nothing was done the stewards didn't even note it I don't think certainly didn't investigate it and then on the app, actual lap lap 64 where the collision took place this was the worst of all of the incidents of Max moving under braking what happened is Max went to the inside line which was great for Lando because he had the braking in this sort of rubbered in grippy part of the racetrack he was able to stomp on those brakes and go for his normal braking phase in the normal braking line but then what happened is Max moved over to the left and did not leave a car's width and therefore there was contact and I cannot see in any world in which the stewards don't say well that is not just an offence but it's hugely dangerous um, and the 10 second penalty for me yes perhaps that was fair if it had been larger than 10 seconds I would have argued that that would have also been fair anything less than 10 seconds and I'm saying that's definitely a bit lenient but then it carried on didn't it because after the corner on the run down to turn four at least it seemed like Max started to veer over and push Lando off the racetrack again even once he had a puncture his car's out of control at that point he knows he's heading for the pit lane Lando at that stage at least had a little bit more grip and a little bit more performance the tire on his car hadn't yet let go and yet Max was still desperate to not let him pass almost it seemed angry it would appear at least angry after the incident that I think is as equally if not more dangerous because that seemed petulant it seemed like it was in retaliation and look I'm only judging these things from the outside I have no data no inside information and maybe that will come to light as time goes by I have no idea but it seemed like the petulance that we've seen in the past from Max it seemed like an immature Max which is not something that we've come to be used to in recent times I have a huge amount of respect for Max Verstappen the way he drives today generally certainly the performance he's able to put in and generally the way he handles pressure I have lauded it up on this very channel in the past and yet today that all seemed to go out the window and I thought that in terms of the, the PR the optics of the whole situation Lando came out of today looking extremely good and I know that doesn't win you a championship but it will go quite a long way in the court of public opinion and moving forward it can even shape the career of a driver when those around you those around the sport have an opinion of what you're like as a racer what you're like as a driver what you like as a man you know and I thought um, Lando did very well in terms of the way he handled the incident even in the post-race interviews he seemed like he was very measured very calm understandably very upset but not shouting and screaming not kicking off he was willing to wait and see how Max responded to the situation and that's something I haven't yet seen so uh, again forgive me for that one I'm doing this video straight after the race um, but it was a situation that effectively ruined Lando's day of course and yet although it hampered Max's race he still scored points he still extended his championship lead he got point for fastest lap um, and that will feel very very unjust to Lando and everybody at McLaren on the plus side Lando was quick today McLaren got things right today they did a better job than Red Bull did over the course of Sunday and look you can't say that for the whole weekend it was Max and Red Bull that that were clearly dominant over the course of yesterday in Saturday, on Saturday and even on Friday I was commentating for the BBC again 
and we were all talking about how it looked like it was going to be Max's weekend. We could even be in for a somewhat familiar domination of Sunday's race. And yet today it didn't really happen because Red Bull and Max, under the pressure that McLaren and others have been putting them under recently, made a couple of mistakes, unusual mistakes, and it was Lando there to capitalise on them. So huge positives for Lando and McLaren in that there is huge performance in that car. As I said, race days look very good, the way they can look after their tyres and execute a race. They've got that nailed, certainly getting there. Today was a great example of it. So that will be something they can carry forward. We're heading into the British Grand Prix where, of course, Lando Norris will want to do very well. McLaren as well. I can tell you from being in a British team, McLaren, at the British Grand Prix, there's an enormous boost that it gives you. It really does. You feel the energy in the same way you hear the drivers like Lewis talking about it. You feel that as a member of the team. You feel the energy that's coming your way from the fans in the grandstand, the extra attention that's on you from the media. Your friends and family are talking about it. The local TV and radio stations and newspapers are all talking about the British drivers and the British race and the British teams. And you feel it. You thrive off that energy. So McLaren will want to do well next weekend at Silverstone. And this will be a really good way into that for them, given the positives that they can take from it. Of course, the results disappointing, but it was nothing within their control that they could have done about that today. And there's still a positive to be taken from that. Let's look at quickly the other side of that McLaren garage before we move on to race winner George Russell. But on the other side, Oscar Piastri, a, a wonderful job and a wonderful result at least to finish second in the Grand Prix, get himself onto the podium. There'll be some confidence to take from that. But I can't help feeling that underlying all of that, he will start to be questioning and wondering why he's not able to match Lando. All of the talk at the moment is about Lando and McLaren being a challenger. No one's talking about Oscar being a challenger. And those are the kind of comments that really get in your head. It's to some extent, although nowhere near as extreme, in the way that people are talking about Max and Red Bull being the force. No one ever talks about Checo. His results haven't backed up what Max is able to do. And at the moment, at least, Oscar Piastri, not quite nowhere near as bad but not quite able to match what Lando's able to do in that car consistently and over time that will start to chip away at him he'll start to feel like a number two driver and when you're in any driver pairing particularly those two who are both supremely talented when you start to feel even subconsciously just a tiny bit like a number two driver what typically can happen is you start to act like one you don't mean to you certainly don't try to but it just starts to creep into your behaviours and the team begin to think in the same way. The media start talking about it more and more. And it's one of those things that you have to sort of get in front of as a driver. You have to put in the performance to stop it. Now, that's going to be very difficult to do at the British Grand Prix with the extra boost that Lando will surely get next weekend at Silverstone. But he needs to do something, Oscar, to try and stop the rot, if you like, in terms of the, the results all going Lando's way and all the talk around that as well. Today will be good. Taking a podium will be great, but he does know that that only came at the expense of Lando being worked out by Max. But of course, the eventual race winner was George Russell. And although he well knows, in the same way that Oscar knows he lucked into P2, George Russell definitely lucked into the race win, but he'll take it. And look, even to come P3, which is where he would have likely come had the first two not taken each other out, P3 would have been a really strong result. And particularly coming off the back of other strong results from Mercedes, this is a, a positive trend for the team from Northamptonshire. They are really turning a corner and there is a lot more to come, Mercedes say, because they've only just unlocked the new direction in which to start developing that car at Mercedes. They're at the beginning of a development journey, whereas many of the other teams are much closer to the end of their development journey, looking for smaller and smaller marginal gains. Mercedes still have some considerable pace to unlock. That's exciting for them. And again, in the same way, heading into Silverstone next week, they are a British team, sort of, with two British drivers. So between Lewis Hamilton, George Russell and Lando Norris, the British Grand Prix is looking pretty spectacular, isn't it? I will be there commentating for the BBC once again. If any of you are going, I'd love it if you came and said hello. That would be wonderful. But it's looking like a brilliant weekend ahead. What else can we talk about? Um, Ferrari, disappointing again. Ferrari have been looking so good in recent times. 
It looked like they were genuinely up there with McLaren a few races ago, and yet now we're talking about them being behind Mercedes. And I think that's a genuine behind Mercedes. Of course, it's going to swing one race to the other, but today they didn't execute well. Of course, the disappointing qualifying put Charles Leclerc in the mix. And at the start of a race like this one, where you get that bottleneck at the first couple of corners, it was highly likely he was going to suffer damage. And indeed he did, and that compromised his entire race. Um, but they were another team that need to do something about it quickly because momentum is huge in Formula One. Carrying momentum from one race to another, particularly in the quick run of races that we're in right now, can genuinely mean a lot to a team. You carry those performances from one weekend into the next, and if you have a disappointing one, it's easy to go into next weekend at the British Grand Prix with a lack of confidence, you know, with question marks over yourself, starting to self-doubt, starting to creep in, both from a driver and a team perspective. So they need to do something. It's not crisis at Ferrari by any stretch of the imagination, and I would imagine that circuit could well be a good one for them, but make no mistake, it should also be a good circuit for Red Bull, and it should also be a good one for Mercedes too. And I have no doubt that McLaren will be up there as well. So we're looking like a great weekend ahead. Actually, just quickly on the Red Bull thing, one other element of disappointment for me was how Red Bull themselves handled the whole thing on the team radio. I quickly heard Christian Horner being interviewed after the race, and I know this happens. Of course, you want to back up your own driver. You don't want to question them. You don't want to go against their opinion. But it seemed so one-sided in the way that that incident shaped out. And yet the team were very quick to criticise Lando Norris and McLaren when I think everybody else looking on would say, look, at the very least, you can't blame it on Lando Norris. At the very least, you could call it a racing incident. But yet they seemed to shift all blame towards McLaren and, and trying to paint a picture that Max was completely innocent and was hard done by, which clearly wasn't the case. Again, optics and the PR around a situation plays a big role. You know, Red Bull have got a lot of work to do in the PR front when it comes to the wider Formula One fan outside of their own fan base. They, they're struggling, let's put it bluntly, on that front. And I suspect there are incidents which are still unfolding around the Christian Horner situation, which will only make this worse. So moments like this will not work well for them in that kind of scenario. Um, anything else to talk about from Austria? Um... I think that's pretty much it. It was all about those big incidents at the front. A disappointing way to end on one front, but on the other hand, great that they were so close to each other. Great that we're having these battles. I loved seeing that fight between Lando Norris and Max Verstappen, right up until the point where the fight came to an abrupt end and ended Lando's race. I loved seeing them battle like that. Yes, moments stepped over a line, perhaps just a little bit, and others were just about okay. But, you know, that's great racing. How we've been crying out for this for so long. You know, and I, I do sort of hate that some of these things get so overanalyzed that we, we have to pick holes in them and the races can get decided in the steward's office. But, and I know, and absolutely, this one should be decided in the steward's office because there was a very clear breach of the rules, probably more than one. But it is a difficult thing to, to sort of see unfold when the racing is exactly the kind of racing we want to see. Wheel to wheel, battling and jousting every corner, every lap, changing positions, a driver behind desperate to get in front. Lando was desperate to get in front today, but I think the key to it was that Max was desperate not to be second. And in the big picture of this season, Max can absolutely afford to be second. And yet there was no way he was going to let that happen at any cost. It felt like a slightly immature approach to the end of that Grand Prix, didn't it? He could have easily afforded to fight as hard as he could, but if Lando had got past, if Lando genuinely was quicker today and had found a, a fair way through, which it looked like he was about to do, you know, Max could have easily afforded to sit back behind him. He may have even been able to hang on to him. A very powerful DRS on that Red Bull with a very powerful DRS zone. He may well have even been able to hang on to the back of him and have another go. Who knows? But even so, if he'd finished second today, he still is in a very, very strong position for the championship. And yet he decided to risk it all. I mean, not risk it all, because of course he's got a, a cushion at the front. But he played a very risky game when he probably didn't need to. Finally, I thought it was a little bit disappointing that we were still talking about track limits violations, even despite the different circuit configuration that we'd put in place for this race. The gravel traps, the moving of the white lines that they'd put in at the Red Bull ring, 
was so effective, really worked very well. And yet still we were arguing about track limits violations and, you know, Lando's, Norris, Lando's race was already compromised by track, by track limits violations towards the end of the Grand Prix anyway, which by the way, is his fault. That is a mistake from Lando Norris. He knows the rules and he breached them, but it feels like we could still play around with that setup that they had by moving the white line, maybe a, a fraction closer to the gravel trap, if that's what's required, so that we don't need these track limits investigations by the stewards and the circuit polices itself. I thought it was a really good step forward, clearly made a massive positive difference. Maybe we can learn from it and tweak it a little bit more just to eradicate the problem altogether. That, folks, is about it. Please don't forget to go and download the Seedstream app. It's totally free. It's an app that from fr some friends and I created to be the best Formula One app available for all, for all Formula One fans. It has this amazing feature where you can scan through all of the top stories and get a brief summary without having to go in and read the whole thing. If you haven't got long, you can get a, a brief summarized version of the story. Uh, it puts all of that content right in your hands, right at your fingertips. It's completely free and I highly recommend you go and download it and check it out. Uh, it's called Seedstream. The link will be in the description of this video or just search Seedstream wherever you get your apps from. Uh, that's it, folks. Thank you very much. I'd love to hear from you on your thoughts. This was a controversial race today with lots of controversies within it. I want to hear your thoughts on them all. Do you agree with my opinions? Do you have your own? Do they differ to mine? That's absolutely fine. Be respectful, but tell me exactly what you think. I'd love to hear it. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week and I will see you post-British Grand Prix.